number three. You draw a two kilogram book to a friend who stands on the ground at distance caps D, which is equal to 10 meters below. And your friend's outstretched hands are at a distance small d, which is equal to 1.5 meter above the ground, as shown in the figure. So you have to see the figure here. There are two persons. The one is exactly standing on the balcony of the building, and she is going to drop the book. And the one who is standing outside the building, she is going to catch the book. So from the dropping point to the ground level, the caps D value is 10 meter. And from the height, from the hand position to the ground level of the second person, the small D value is 1.5 meter. So that means the intermediate height we can easily find easily by using the rule H, which is equal to caps D minus small D. That is 10 minus 1.5, which is equal to 8.5 meter. Now we have to answer for eight questions one by one. So let's read the first question. What is given in part A? How much work does the gravitational force do on the book as it drops to her hand? That means we have to consider this height. And also we have to apply the rule of the work done by the gravity. So what is the rule for work done by the gravity? The work done by the gravity, which is given by the rule M G H cosine theta, right? So what is the theta here? When she is going to drop the book, the book is going to fall in this direction. And at the same time, the gravity also in the same direction. So that means the angle between the dropping point, the displacement, as well as the gravity will be the same direction. So theta, which is equal to zero. So therefore, cosine of zero becomes one. So now I'm going to substitute the value. So the mass of the book is two kilogram multiplied by 9.8. And then the height from the dropping point to the reaching point of the second person's hand, which is 8.5 meter. So 2 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by 8.5 and then cosine of 0, which is equal to 1. So I have to multiply this. So when I multiply all these, I got the answer as 166.6 joules. So this is the answer for the first question. Let's go to the second question. What is given in the second question? What is the change in potential energy of the book earth system during the drop? So here we have to consider this is our initial point and this is the final point. Clear? So now how to find the change in potential energy as we know the change in potential energy formula is the final potential energy minus initial potential energy that means m g d sorry m g small d minus m g caps d that means this is the final this is the initial so we can take m g as a common so inside the bracket we got a small d minus caps d so here the small d is the final position which is this 1.5 meter and the caps d is the initial which is 10 so i have to substitute the value 2 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by 1.5 minus 10 so we got the answer here delta u which is equal to minus 166.6 joule so this is the answer for the second or we can give the answer directly you no need to go for these steps in chapter 8, we studied the rule work done by the gravity, which is equal to negative of change in potential energy, right? So you can see in the first part, we already find the answer for the work done by the gravity. So we can easily apply this rule. When you apply this rule, work done by the gravity is equal to negative of change in potential energy. So you can simply take the answer from the first part, just add the negative sign. Through this also, we can find the answer. Clear. Okay, now we have to go to the third question. What is given in the third part? Let's read the question. If the gravitational potential energy U of the system is taken to be zero at the ground level. So we have to consider to the ground level, it's a zero level potential energy. So that means here, this is the ground. So we have to consider the potential energy at the ground level. Let's we take the ground level potential energy is U zero, which is zero joules. Now, what we are going to find, we are going to find what is the gravitational potential energy when the book is released. That means the release point. So let's we consider this diagram. So this is our release point. So from the release point to this book. So I can just raise this diagram here. So now we can easily find the answer. So we are going to find. So this is our ground level. 
This is our ground level potential energy. What is the ground level potential energy? The ground level potential energy U naught, which is equal to zero joules. Now we have to find what is the potential. So that means this is our ground level reference is zero. So from this point to this point, we have to find the potential energy. So we know the formula for the potential energy. What is the formula for potential energy? Potential energy formula is given by the rule mg. This is the release point to the ground. What is the distance? What is the height? The height here they mentioned is caps T. So mg caps T. So we have to substitute the value 2 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by 10. So here, when you multiply all these, we got the answer as 196 joules. So this is the potential energy for the release point. Or you can just mention plus your ground level potential on energy also. Because what is our ground level potential energy? Our ground level potential energy is zero. So you, if you add this number with zero, you'll get the same. So through this also, you can find the answer. And then this part D, what is the same information, but this time we are going to find the potential energy for the reaching point. So that means this height we are going to consider. So what we have to do, we have to use the same rule, potential energy, which is nothing but mg, this time small d. Why? They clearly mention what is the potential energy when the book reaches her hand. So mgd plus the ground level potential energy is u naught. So we have to substitute the value. 2 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by 1.5 plus 0. So here I got the answer for the potential energy when the books reached a hand, which is 29.4 joules. So this is the answer. Now we have to come for the part E. That means the fifth question. So this time what we have to take we have to consider now take the gravitational potential energy at the ground level should be 100 joules. So initially we consider this is zero joules, but this time what we are going to consider this time we are going to consider the ground level potential energy is 100 joules. And for this, what we are going to find, we are going to find what is the work done by the gravity. Even though you have the ground level potential energy is 100 joules, the work done by the gravity will be the same. So what is the answer we got for the first part that will be the same for the part E. So what is the rule? Work done by the gravity, which is equal to m g h of cosine of 0 y, because the same answer what we got from the first part, which is 166.6 joules. Why we have to consider the same answer? Because we, when you consider, the, when you are going to find the answer for the work done by the gravity, the potential energy at the ground level will not be affected. It will be the same. Likewise, when you come for a sixth part, that means the F question, what they ask, again, you have to consider the potential energy at the ground level would be the 100 joules, but this time you are going to find the change in potential energy. So we already studied the rule, the work done by the gravity, which is equal to negative of change in potential energy. Therefore, change in potential energy, therefore, change in potential energy, which is equal to negative of work done. So negative of work done is the same 166.6, therefore, my change in potential energy, which is equal to minus 166.6 joules. So this is the answer. So when you have any gravitational, when you have any potential energy at the ground level, work done by the gravity and the change in potential energy will not affect that. Only it will be affect when you are going to find the potential energy alone. Let's we see the G part. When you come to G part, you will get a clear understanding. So you can read now take gravitational potential energy U at ground level. This time we are going to find what is the potential energy at the release point. So for this, what you have to do, we have to find the M G caps T plus U naught. So this time for U naught, we have to substitute this 100 because we consider the ground level potential energy is 100. So we have to substitute the value. So two multiply by 9.8 multiply by uh, the height, the caps D is 10 plus 100. So what we got here, 196, we got here, plus 100, we got 296 joules. So the potential energy at the ground level, this time we have to add. You should not add these ground level potential energy when you are going to find the change in potential energy and the work done, but you have to add this when you are going to find only the potential energy. That's the reason here we add this answer. So that means the potential energy at the ground level 
as 100. So when you find the answer for the releasing point, you have to add this number with 100. By that, we will get the answer for 296 twos. Likewise, you have to find the same thing, but this time the book will reach your hand. Again, you have to use the same formula mg small d because we have to consider where this book will reach your hand plus the ground level potential energy. So 2 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by the distance is 1.5 plus 100. So when you multiply and add with 100, we got here as 29. 0.4 plus 100, we got 129.4. Sorry, 129.4 joules. So this is the answer for the last part. So actually, in this question, you should be very careful about the initial point and the final point, and also the formula will be the same. The formula for gravitational potential energy is MGH and the change in potential is nothing but the final potential energy minus initial potential energy. So you should be very careful about the initial point and the final point. So these are all the answer for the question three. That's it. Thank you.